grab your cup. Let's talk about triggers and boundaries. I did a post this weekend on triggers. It got a lot of engagement. And that post came from, or was thought I thought of it because of a client call on Friday. We were talking about boundaries a little bit. So here's what I said in the post. Imagine life without triggers. Um, imagine that people can do and say things and you're not triggered. So why do we get triggered? It's an opportunity to look and see what is not yet healed in me? What is the thing that I'm responding to that's coming from here, not coming from out there? Which then is going to reflect our boundaries because boundaries, even healthy boundaries, come from a place of trying to control and manipulate what's out there. So the finger is pointed out there as the problem. When we point the finger here, not as a problem, but as an opportunity to see what is it that I still need to address, now our boundaries come from, let me stay in alignment with myself, and I don't have to accept anything that anybody else does, but I'm not gonna be upset about it. I'm just going to move naturally somewhere else if something's happening that's not in alignment with me. So let me give you two examples. The first example is when someone is triggered and not healed and using boundaries in a way that is more controlling and manipulative. So I had a client who had had some surgery. She wasn't happy with the area of the surgery and how it looked afterwards, I think particularly the scar tissue. So she went to a massage therapist and the massage therapist said during the massage, you know, I know a doctor who could really you know, fix this or help with how this scar healed for you. Because not only was it how it looked, but I think it also was painful. And my client was annoyed and upset and said, I'm not going back to her because I don't need to go and try to relax in a massage and feel good and let stress go and have somebody remind me of a flaw in my body. That's not why I go for a massage. So I'm not going back to her. Now, it really wasn't, so the, the boundary she set up is, I'm not going back to her. She said something that upset me. The boundary came from a way of controlling, and it came because the trigger was there, because the client needed people to say or be a certain way that fit for her. Focusing on what's happening out there determines how I feel in here right? Externally focused. Internally focused, if, if she was, you know, focusing so that not being a victim to what's happening to her, but going, wow, I noticed when she said that I, I had this response, what was that about? I think I really have some issue around self-acceptance. Like this scar just represents for me an opportunity to love myself exactly as I am, even with this scar. And if I want to fix it, because then maybe I won't have some pain around there or I'll feel, you know, I'll like better how it looks, that's fine. But right now I'm, I'm upset because I feel like there's something wrong with me. That's an opportunity to see what happened and to heal the thing so that she's no longer triggered by it. An example of having a boundary that comes from looking inward uh, I'll use my own life. So I don't really listen to the news anymore. I just, I just don't, which sometimes me leaves me like I have to ask people what's going on because I'm really not paying attention to the news. But what I decided for myself and what's in alignment for me is I want to spend my day as much as possible in emotions that feel good, the feeling more peaceful, all of that. And the news feels like it's being, it's very bombarding with negative energy. So I, I, I don't watch the news because it's not in alignment with how I wanna spend my day. But I'm not, I don't get mad about the news. I don't, if I hear something, you know, be like triggered by it. Here's another example. You know that I lost my daughter a few years ago Someone recently said, was telling me a story about another family that lost their child and she said, I don't wanna trigger you. But I'm not triggered when I hear about 
the loss of other children because I've done the work to heal and to come to the place where I am okay that loss happens in life. I understand that that's part of life and I'm healed about that. If I stayed in the place of life happened to me, that's pointing the finger out, life happened to me, life took my child before I thought that should happen, right? It was out of the order of things. That's not supposed to happen to someone. If I was staying there in that place, then I would be triggered when I hear of somebody else losing their child. For me, grief comes up around Charlotte just when I miss her. Like, oh, you know, I see something and Charlotte would like that. Oh, Charlotte used to love that. Oh, you know, then I, I'm present to missing her and I let myself feel the grief but I'm not triggered about other children because I'm not feeling like life happened to me. I'm looking at what do I need to do to, to be in alignment with the ebb and flow that life actually is. Okay, so I hope those examples are helpful, but use your triggers as an opportunity to say, wow, what is it in me? Why am I responding that way? What am I telling myself? What do I still need to? Not that we need to. It's not, it's just living. How do you want to live? Do you want to live triggered or do you want to live from a place of peace and alignment? Okay, have a great day.